Can we get some action shots? Alright. Alright, come on in. Put your smile on. Put your, hey, this is this is uh, Dr. Kim Hollyfield. She's the one that neutered our sweet gizzard today. She's obviously doing some uh, some dentals today as well. It's almost been an exact repeat of my parents' mm. life. I feel like we're reliving the life they had. I feel like my children are reliving the life I had. I had a wonderful childhood, and um, being able to see my parents model that relationship in the practice, working side by side, it's helped me to be able to model that for my children. Um, it's been a huge blessing to have Rebecca in the practice and the children. When they're not at school, they're here. Andrew never intended to be a veterinarian like his father. After graduating from Bob Jones University with a degree in marketing, Andrew worked in a sales position for several years. As Andrew can tell you, I never encouraged him to become a veterinarian. The reason being, if he were, were not naturally inclined or interested, he would be miserable. I, I didn't want him to be unhappy in his work. And I think he is happy now. <laughs> Very. After earning degrees from Clemson University and the University of Georgia, Andrew returned to Simpsonville and began the process of taking over his father's veterinary practice. He also met his wife, Rebecca, during this time, and she became an important part of his future plans. I guess that could have been considered a really challenging time, but I think you just, you just do what you gotta do. Like you just do the, as Andrew often says, you just do the next right thing, like the next best step that you feel like God would have you do in that process. Taking over a family business is never easy, but Andrew and Rebecca determined that as the business grew, the family part would stay the same. It's a big family. I've always felt like it was a family more than a business. It's good to be able to have the work life and still be able to be with my kids because I didn't want somebody else raising them. That was Caitlin right there. Okay. That was in the bathroom. Oh my. And that was her office. She oh. was on a stool. This is her office now. So, you know, she, she's definitely she's upgraded upgraded. from the bathroom. That's nice. I, you know, I have family, I have children, they're married with kids, and, and they're, you know, family, they understand. They, they both are family-centered people, and, uh, and so they understood that necessity for me as well, being a working mom, so that, yeah. that was a, a huge blessing. Andrew would always say to me, he'd say things like, you know, our children will be incorporated into our lives and be a part of what we're already doing. It's not like, here comes parenting, and so everything just kind of like stops and has to completely change. Um, it was more like, oh, okay, well, we're doing this business thing. And then three years later, Bayless is born and our lives go on and she's just a part of what we do. Um, and, and so I think our children have benefited from that because it just, I'm hoping that they'll be more well-rounded. Andrew assured me his daughters will soon be working alongside him at the clinic and he is looking forward to their time together in more ways than one. No litter boxes yet, but it'll come. So I was thinking I've got, I hope, about 10 to 15 years of litter box time, cage cleaning time, and lawn mowing time okay. before they're all out of the house. Yeah. Maybe longer. We'll see. Yes. It'll be great. <laughs> Andrew's love for others begins at home, but extends to everyone he interacts with on a regular basis. He credits what he learned in undergrad as the foundation of his ability to connect so well with others. I have to communicate with the person first before I can get to the pet. Um, you got to go through the people. And so using those skills that I learned at the university has been extremely helpful. Those of us that were there at the time, not only did we learn how to make a living, but we learned how to live. And you know, at the time I didn't think too much about that, I, I, just, I just heard it. But you know, when you get older and you have time to reflect back on things, you realize that really was what was happening and the faculty were really pouring that into me as much as I guess I would allow them to do so. I feel like this, what I learned there was foundational, tremendously helpful. I still had one more question to answer. Who taught Andrew to love others so selflessly? He gave me a pretty big clue in our initial interview. 
I think of my parents, um, Byron and Eloise. Um, they taught me to ultimately love the profession that I'm in, whether I knew I was growing to love it or not. Um, you know, and of course they taught me to love people, which is again, so important in this profession. It sounds ironic to some people. I thought you were a veterinarian because you like pets. Oh, well, I do obviously, but you have to love people first uh, in order to get to their pet. Um, I learned that from my parents. With this in mind, I decided to go to the source and ask Doc what the secret is to loving others the same way Christ loves us. I, I guess it goes back to, uh, is it Proverbs 3, 5, and 6? Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge Him and He will direct thy path. And that is one of the things I've really wanted is that my family would love God and be faithful and obedient. And, and I know it has worked out to the benefit of the people that they come in contact with. There are certain aspects of every day that are hard, but on the whole, every day is wonderful when you look back and see where you've come from. And knowing that the Lord doesn't just bring you along just to drop you. It's like, He didn't have me do what I did and go through, you know, it put me through everything I've been through just to bring me along, just drop me in and say, okay, you're on your own now. It's not how it is. I know that to be the case because I've seen it happen so many times in my life. Um, that the Lord intends to continue to carry me on, carry me through. And that does give you peace about stepping out on faith and moving forward and knowing that, you know, if, if you are intending to serve the Lord and honor Him in what you're doing, if He allows that to come to pass, then He's going to honor that and uphold you in that. And you can just move forward and, and not worry about the what ifs. Because if you worry about the what ifs, you will get bogged down in, in worry. So you, you have to just move forward, uh, knowing that the Lord's in it and just let Him. It's His business, it's whatever business you're in. It's His ultimately, if you've given it to Him. So let Him worry with it. Let Him take care of it. <laughs>